Time now for a rumble, Southern style, on Suzuki's VL1500 Intruder. When Suzuki launched this custom cruiser in Sydney, Australia last year, journalists were told that Suzuki's major goal with the VL's design was to make it long, low, and massive. With a dry weight of 296 kilograms and a wheelbase of 1,700 millimeters and a seat height of 700 millimeters, we think it's pretty safe to say that Suzuki definitely achieved its goal. At the heart of the VL is a 1,462cc, 45-degree, aero-cooled V-twin, sporting three valves per cylinder. And according to Suzuki, the VL's lump delivers more torque at low revs than any other Suzuki in the company's history. That grunt is delivered to the rear wheel via a five-speed transmission and a shaft final drive. Along with the long, low, massive directive, Suzuki told its designers to create a platform that would be easy to customize. So, for the purposes of this review, we ordered a VL1500 fully dressed. We then asked journalist Larry Tate and veteran wrench Bill Matheson to sample the VL1500 down south in Savannah, Georgia. And here's what they had to say after several days of living on the road with a welcome intruder. Um, in the design of the bike, one thing that was interesting is they sent a design crew over from Japan who spent a lot of time uh, looking and ta interviewing Americans as to what they were looking for. And what they came out is that it had to be big, it had to be massive, it had to be large, and it had to have lots of chrome. Another interesting design feature that they also said is that the chrome had to be easily accessible. Well, in terms of looking at this bike, which has a lot of accessories, bolt-on accessories available from Suzuki on it, it certainly is big, it certainly is massive, and it has an awful lot of chrome. Um, it seems to have a lot of power. Um, fifth gear, I've noticed, is quite a high overdrive gear, but it's got a lot of power on the highway. There's no trouble running at 120, 140 K. And uh, from the motor standpoint, I have, I have no complaints, albeit it was new to get used to a rocker lever pedal and the one thing that I will do if, with if I had one was to cut off the heel part because I periodically would kick myself into neutral but it's got a nice motor. Yeah the motor is nice it has a nice sort of visceral feel to it it doesn't shake too much but definitely enough that you you know you know it's a v-twin and not an inline four or a triple or something. Uh, it's definitely the best feature of the bike as far as I'm concerned it's it's a it's a nice job uh, of building that sort of v-twin American iteration uh, type stuff. First thing we'll start with one of the most important parts to me, which is the seat. Um, I'm fairly well proportioned, so I like a wide seat. And one of the things that was neat about it, particularly when we did our longer runs, is that the passenger seat sits very high, and for me, it formed a very comfortable uh, backrest. I found the bars and the, and the controls seem to fit me. I'm only five foot six, and probably one of the things that I was probably very happy with, particularly yesterday in the rain, was the windscreen. It was perfectly positioned, so I could look over it. I would, did not, was not buffeted, and I found that particularly comfortable. Another thing that's particularly important, since these big motors are very thirsty on gas, uh, was the built-in gas gauge and the idiot light that came on to tell me yesterday as we pulled off the highway that I just went on to reserve. Yeah. And doing that automatically was a, very nice instead of the old days of having to reach under the tank and try to fumble and try to find... Uh, the gas cock to flip well, it'd it over. Be a long to reach down on this one because it'd be underneath yeah, really the seat. It'd be under the seat. <laughs> really so that was somewhere. a nice touch. Yeah. And again, particularly for touring, having a shaft drive and not have the headache of adjusting chains and lubricating chains every day when you're on the road uh, was a really nice factor. It's an interesting little detail in the way the uh, the fuel works on this thing. What looks like a gas tank isn't. Uh, yeah, Bill can show us here. He's got the key in his hand. The gas tank's actually down underneath the seat. So you pop that little cover open, that just unscrews, and that's where your fuel goes into it. Uh, people scratch their heads a bit at the service stations when you do it, but it's a good idea. Again, it's part of their getting the mass down low. When you're carrying a ton of fuel down there, it's certainly better off down low than it is up high. So The way it's set up, it's kind of a, a weekend tour. The bags are small, but uh, for a weekend trip, not a big deal. And uh, certainly, uh, as Bill was saying earlier, there's all kinds of action rifle gear you can buy if you wanted to get a top box or some hard bags from Corbin or whoever. Uh, the stuff is certainly available, but as it's set up right now, I'd have to say it would be, you know, go to work bike and weekend tour type thing. For me, the other thing that I quite liked and was a little surprised about was the windscreen. You'd think it would be nothing complicated about getting a piece of, you know, Lexan or something and bending it slightly and sticking it on the front of a bike, but it's remarkable the difference there are between different 
types and this one is one of the smaller ones but one of the more effective it does a, a heck of a good job they've done a nice piece of work with that so uh, that would be my big surprise for the uh, for the bike and, and the thing I liked best about riding it was the motor it was again a pleasant surprise it's nice and strong and torquey and has nice feel-good vibes to it as well